Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, Loving spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the And you are the light and life of all creation. Amen. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Oh God, I call to you. Oh God, I call to you. As an hands, offering to you, as an you. offering to you, keep watch within me, God. Keep deep in my heart, me, may the light of your love be the burning bright. Let my prayer rise Let up prayer rise like up incense be. Praise to the God of all 
prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. And now we'll have a message from Pastor Dane. Hey, everyone. So I know we're in the middle of Lent and it's not Easter yet, but This week in the midst of the news of the coronavirus and people worrying about what our world is going to look like for a while and with everyone trying to hunker down and keep safe behind closed doors, I thought of an Easter story. And I thought especially about this story from the very first Easter when Jesus had risen from the dead and the disciples were hunkered down behind closed doors, afraid and worried about many things. And that's where Jesus showed up. So here's our reading for today from the Gospel of John in the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I could really use some peace today. I need peace to calm my worries right now because, like many of you, I have a lot of worries. I've been worrying a lot about the vulnerable people in our community of Wilmer and around the world who will have a tough time with this coronavirus. I worry about the health care workers and the burden they're going to carry in the coming days. I worry about the economy and families trying to figure it out and figure out what it might look like to be cooped up in their houses for a few weeks. I worry about my own family and how we're going to maybe get on each other's nerves if this lasts too long. I worry where I'm going to find toilet paper and hand sanitizer. I wonder if that's how the disciples felt huddled together, locked up in that dark room, afraid of what the future would hold. Their Lord Jesus has died, and they wanted to see him again. They wanted things to get back to normal, but they were so full of worry and doubt that when the women from the tomb came and shared the good news of the resurrection, it just didn't seem possible that Jesus could have risen from the dead. And so here we find them huddled in a dark room, not believing it was possible that things were going to get any better, at least for a long, long while. I don't know about you, but I could use the peace of Jesus right now, the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that calms my worried spirit, especially in the uncertainty we're facing now. I need peace of a different kind than the world offers, the peace that can only come from God, the peace that comes in the midst of locked doors and disciples of Jesus huddled in the dark, scared and worried and afraid. I could use some peace that reassures me that we'll get through this, that someone is with us in the midst of it, and somehow it's going to be okay. But then again, I know that I tend not to like to sit still long enough to hear a peaceful message like that. I'm a person like many of you who would rather keep moving and keep going out and keep doing the everyday things of life. And we good church people at times like these want to be doers, helping each other out and feeding the hungry and performing acts of love and that sort of thing. And if the government says we can't do any of that, at least we'd like to numb ourselves with a good big old bowl of ice cream or distract ourselves with a few uplifting shows on Netflix, like, you know, The Walking Dead or Breaking Bad. Sitting still and trying to find the peace that passes all understanding seems like a difficult exercise, especially when our heads are so full of worries in these troubling times. 
Lillian Daniel shares a story of how she relates to this sort of attitude about not wanting to sit still. She says she likes yoga and especially the way they end with a vigorous workout and stretching. And at the end of it all, she feels like she has this sense of accomplishment that she did something really hard and she's transported to a different place than when she started. But she just can't stand the way it begins. All they do for the first part of the class is they just sit there and they breathe. Let's begin with some breathing, the yoga instructor explains in a quiet, mystic voice. Ujjayi breathing, bouncing the breath off the top of the throat. Six counts inhaling, six counts holding, six counts exhaling. Are you kidding me? says Lillian. What fresh form of torture is this? It's going to go on forever. First six counts, then eight counts, then one nostril, then the other, and then back to something else boring. It's just breathing for crying out loud. We know how to do that already. Let me learn some cool new yoga moves and get some exercise. After the three minutes of meditation time at the beginning of yoga had passed, after what felt like three hours, I know from experience, says Lillian, that it will only get worse before it gets better because now the teacher has started talking nonsense. She's talking about imaginary chakras and the like and then asking you to do things with your body that are just impossible. After you've held your ujjayi breath for eight counts, slowly lift your right leg up above your head and flex and point and flex and point, then wrap that right leg around your neck. More advanced students, wrap it around your neck a second time as you breathe regularly while singing the Indian National Anthem silently in only the right side of your brain. For a deeper challenge, inhale through your right nostril and move into a handstand position. More advanced students, once you are in the handstand, don't use your hands at all. Just float upside down in the air, breathing, breathing, breathing. She makes fun, but Lillian says it's really weird. By the end of the class, I realize how much that breathing mattered because something changes in me every time. After all this breathing and stretching and taking deep breaths again and frankly just sitting still, I'm able to be somewhere I wasn't before. And at the end, the whole class is in that space bowing and saying namaste to one another, which is essentially to say the divine in me acknowledges the divine in you. Because at the beginning, their heads were so full of the things that had burdened them from their lives they weren't thinking about the divine at all. But now after the breathing exercise, they could all notice, all these students, notice how God had been right there with them all the while. You know, I wonder if this is a bit of what is going on for the disciples in our story. They've been running around with Jesus all the time. They have followed him every step of the way, not thinking, just doing and they think it's great. They've seen his miracles, done a few themselves, and they've heard his stories and everything is hunky-dory. They're doing important things, just doing. But when everything hits the fan and Jesus is killed before their eyes, they run off defeated and they're unsure what to do. They can't really do anything. And even on that first Easter Sunday, when they've heard the news that Jesus has risen from the dead, they can't believe it. Never mind the fact that he has told them that this was going to happen. Never mind that he has told them that after three days he would rise from the dead. Never mind the fact that the women of the tomb get it and they've told them that he is risen and that they've seen him and that he's alive again. The disciples are still huddled in a locked room with their fears and worries and uncertain what's next when they can't do anything. And they're unsure what to believe. It is only here, faced with their fears and worries, faced with all that is troubling them, just stuck in that space where all they can do is sit still, that Jesus shows up and Jesus mysteriously blows through the doors of their house and says, peace be with you. And that's when they see the Lord. 
And right then and there, in the midst of their darkest fears and worries, huddled in that dark room, locked away, that's where Jesus breathes with them. And he breathes upon them the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I think, as Christians, we assume that life consists of just doing. We should be out there doing all the time. We should be all out there loving and serving our neighbors and doing good for others, especially in times like these, because it's okay for others to be in need, but not us. We're supposed to do and be for them and care for them. And if we just keep moving, everything will be all right, right? But sometimes I wonder if we need to face difficult times like these that shake us from just doing all the time. And we need to be forced to just sit there and breathe so that we can be transported to a place we weren't before. And maybe this is our time to just sit still and breathe and think about what really matters to us and to God in this world. Maybe this is our time to just sit still and breathe and play with our kids and read a book and talk about life with our beloved and care for ourselves physically and mentally and spiritually. And maybe this is our time to connect with others on the phone. Or maybe it's just our time to sit still and breathe and listen for what God might have to say to us. Maybe it's only here that we'll sit down long enough to see that Jesus is indeed with us all the time. It's a season of Lent right now, and as a friend of mine shared recently, we're all giving up more than we thought we would at the beginning. Maybe the biggest thing we have to give up right now is doing. Many of us have to give up the normal way we do things. Many of us are worried and afraid and hiding behind locked doors for fear of what might happen when we go outside. It's okay to sit there in that place not able to do, but just to breathe and sit still and think about what God might say to us here. You know, the good news of this story is that Jesus shows up in those kinds of places. In fact, he loves to show up when we're stuck in our worries and locked up in our fears And that's where he blows through the doors of our locked rooms and says, peace be with you. And he breathes on us, the Holy Spirit. I know these are difficult times we're living in. I know that we're uncertain of what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. It is in times like these when all we can do is sit still and breathe, though, that we can be rest assured that God is there too. In fact, as we're sitting here trying to figure out what's next and we're unsure how we can do and be in the future, God comes to us and breathes his very life into us and says, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. I'm here too. Whatever you're going through today, wherever you are, rest assured that Jesus is with you. And more than that, rest assured that the peace of God is with you too. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the Chosen One of God Most High. And Mary said, 
I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One. Strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one Humbling the proud of heart You have cast the mighty down from their thrones And uplifted the humble of heart You have filled the hungry with wondrous things And left the wealthy no part Great and mighty are you, O faithful one Strong is your justice, strong your love As you promised to Sarah and Abraham Kindness forevermore my soul proclaims your greatness, O oh God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Comfort 
grant us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.